Hi, my name is Lisa. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and I'm here today to show you an online class. Um, it's my mission out there to share things with you guys that are easy to do. Um, I have a lot of people tell me these things look hard, and it's kind of a challenge to me to make it easy for you guys. So welcome, and I hope you enjoy today's project. What we're gonna do is an exploding box. This was again, another request. If you ever have anything that you found on Pinterest or is out there and you wanna be able to do it and you're not sure how, let me know. We'll feature it on one of our Facebook Lives. But this, you take the lid off the box and the whole thing pops open and we have pages. Now there's the option of leaving them to just be pages and then there's the idea of having a pocket that will hold something and the one we're doing today will have a pocket but know that if that um, isn't something you want and you just want it plain you can do that as well I will show you how to do that um, but they look great like sitting on a table you know presenting a gift if you have more than one message to say maybe you're giving a gift from an office staff and you know there's lots of people that want to sign this would be great it also works really well for those of us grandmas to set out on a table and fill with photos of all of our grandkids so let's get started on today's project. I've got most of it cut out. I still need to make the lid, but I'll show you how we go about doing that on camera. Um, let me move you down to my desk. So here we are down on my desk and this is our box. I have decorated this one with one of the designer series papers that's going to be in our new catalog. And we can also decorate the inside. We'll play around with that on camera too. But this one I'm going to do with a separate piece of designer series paper out of the new catalog. This one has the hydrangea on it. So I think you're really going to love it. And I've got all my sizes cut out. For your box, you want to start with three 12 by 12 pieces of cardstock. And when I mentioned this to someone, they went 12 by 12. Does Stampin' Up! have 12 by 12 cardstock? And yes, we do. <laughs> and it's in our catalog right here. You know, we're normally looking at these pages, and this shows us all of our color coordination and how we can get things that are, you know, the same shade and all our different stuff, the cardstock, the pad, the refills, Stampin' Blends, all of that. Now, if you turn the page, right here is our 12 by 12. It comes in our various color families. So you can get brights, neutrals, regals, or subtles. You get 20 sheets, two of each of the 10 colors. So this is where you'll find it. You know, I'm sure you could do this with smaller papers. You know, with the eight and a half by 11, you would just have to step it down and it would be quite a bit smaller. But I wanted to be able to show you guys, we do indeed have 12 by 12 paper. And so I took this one and this, I left it 12 by 12. I scored it at four inches and eight inches. Now I scored that both ways. So it's four and eight this way, rotated and then four and eight this way. And then the next one is 11 and a quarter at three and three quarter and seven and a half. Three and three quarter, seven and a half. Now I'm gonna show you, I use my, simply scored quite a bit because I like the fact that it's exact. If I push this up into the corner and then I go in the little grooves at the top, it's absolutely going to hit exactly, exactly at that measurement. You can also do it in your trimmer. So if you don't have the simply scored, you can use your trimmer. This is a scoring blade, but it's up to you to make sure that you're exactly on the line over here. Some people are really good at that. Some people like me that need bifocals, this thing works much better. Up to you. But on our third one, this is 10 and a half by 10 and a half. We're gonna score it at three and a half and seven. So like I said, I'm gonna find this and I'm gonna go straight down. And I'm using the fat end of the stylus. There's a fat and a skinny end. You can use the skinny end, but I definitely would not use it if you're ever scoring uh, designer series paper because it's smaller, it actually goes into the groove, whereas the bigger one is designed to set on top of the groove. And so all it's pushing down into the groove is the paper. The ball is staying on top. 
So if you ever wondered why there's two different sizes, that's why. This one rides on top, the other one goes into the groove. And on the designer series paper, that might actually cut it. And we don't, that's not usually not our desire. <laughs> so again, three and a half and seven. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come in and we're going to cut the corners. And you could do that on your trimmer or you can do it with your scissors, but I'm basically going to go from the corner to the point. So in each one, we're going to go from the point to the corner. And again, this is pencil and so it's easily erasable and it's going to fold over. So really the pencil mark is going to be on the inside. You won't see it at all. I'm mostly doing the pencil because I want you guys to see how easy it is. When I cut from a corner to the middle freehand, people go, oh my gosh, you're so talented. I couldn't do that. That's not true, but to humor you, I'm going to go ahead and do the pencil line because anybody can follow a pencil line. No excuses there, right? It also makes it a lot easier for things to go together if we burnish with a bone folder. You may have heard me say that the way that we usually burnish things is we turn the mountain into a valley or the valley into a mountain. So as you can see, this is right now raised up and we're gonna make it go down and then run it with the bone folder. Again, I've found that it, you know, sometimes it makes a difference, sometimes it doesn't, but the idea is that the fibers have already been broken the one direction, and so it's less likely to rip if you do the reverse. And again, that's more picky with designer series paper than it is with cardstock. And some people have asked about my stuff on my desk here, and the total bottom of this thing is just one of those fun foam pieces from, you know, your local craft store. Um, I've seen them online, but it's just a large foam mat. The idea is it's because the photopolymer stamps don't have a little bit of sponge to them like our others do. And so that gives cushion to the stamps and they get a better impression. I'm also using the Stampin' Up! grid paper and this is available to customers. It is fabulous. The middle point here allows you for centering things. It's got the measurements on the bottom. You can make your wish list, notes about your project. I line up my stamps on this. It's very useful and I highly recommend it. Also keeps your desk nice and clean. So I've got all of my edges burnished and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut down the middle. Now I'm saying these points, these are going to make my little pockets. And so if you don't want the pockets, if you just want the four flaps, then rather than cut down the middle, you're going to cut down the score lines and you're just going to remove this entire square. So again, if you're looking for easy and we want to take the stress out of it, it's not necessary to make the pockets. It does work without them. Now you can decorate these after it's together or you can decorate it before. I'm going to go ahead and decorate before because I like the idea that we can lay it flat. It's going to make it easier for you guys to see. I have already cut my paper. This is out of the Hydrangea Haven suite. But the stamp set is the Hydrangea Haven. And so these are going to go in the littlest one. And because these were at three and a half and seven, so it's a three and a half spot, this is three and a quarter. Make sense? So I'm going to go ahead and load those in there. For the second one, these, because these are three and three quarter, these are three and a half. I think for this one, I'm going to use the other side. Again, they're both pretty. I hate to cover one up. 
layer two, and then the final layer, and then the lid. Now these, because the box is gonna go like this, I want the hydrangeas on the bottom. And so I'm gonna make the hydrangea part be all in the middle with the blue part going towards the top. And then I have another blue piece that's gonna go on our lid. So when these four come up, it's gonna hit this one and then they'll match. I made sure that I picked most of the designer series paper that does not have a, a pattern or a direction to it, except this one. So make sure when you're putting yours together, if the designer series paper has a pattern and a direction, make sure that you know what orientation it's gonna go into. So you don't put it all together and have it upside down. Ask me how I know. Now, the only thing we need to do is fold these in. And so we're gonna go ahead and attach these to, each, to itself. And we can do this any number of ways. You can do tear and tape, you can do seal, you can do seal plus, but we're just gonna take those corners and we're folding them. And I'm trying to get it as close to the bottom as is reasonable because I want the pockets to have some depth to them at least. And it's obviously gonna hit down here. So by putting the tape on it, we're losing about a quarter of an inch. And I don't wanna lose much more than that. And I usually try to go the same direction too. So let's make all of our little pockets. Do this side first, kind of like a pinwheel. And it doesn't have to, again, it's just my liking things to match. And I'm using the take your pick tool to remove the top of the tear and tape. Now again, if you wanted to, you could decorate these little triangles before you fold them over and stick them to each other, or you can choose to do it afterwards, or you can choose to leave it blank. It's all up to you. As you can see, I have a little bit of a pencil line, but that's why I have the pencils that I do because they have this really big eraser. So now we have our three layers. And then basically all we need to do is glue them together on the bottoms. So this one is gonna to attach to this and you can do this with liquid glue if you wanna have time to wobble it around or you can do it with the seal. The idea is I just wanna make sure that I'm going straight down and getting the same size border all the way around. And a lot of people will decorate something in the middle that's three-dimensional. So we had the mini, what was it a curvy keepsake box? You could make your own little box. I've seen people make a birthday cake with the tea light candles. Um, I've seen people put like a jewelry box in the middle, you know, any number of things. But now we have our box together. Isn't that pretty? love that paper and now we need the lid now remember when i said that this was cut every four inches well you'd think you'd have a four by four lid and kind of you do but you want a four and one eighth by four and one eighth because you want it to be just a little bit big so that it can slide over the top the fact that it's six makes it nice and easy because where this butts up on the edge is exactly six inches. Okay, so this is how we're starting out with our lid is I have my six by six <laughs> piece of cardstock. So I have this part and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut in to make my flaps 
at each side. And I'm just kind of removing the score line. So some people say they wedge it a little bit. I am wedging it a teeny bit, but the most important part is you really don't want it much wider than the actual score line. We're just remo removing a titch. And I'm just doing it those four pieces because that's gonna make these fold in and be our tabs. Okay, you got me? And again, this is something I would probably do with liquid glue because I wanna make sure that it's good and stuck, but lined up perfectly. And I'm not putting very much glue. Those are very thin lines. And then I'm gonna wiggle with this a little bit trying to get that as square as I can in there. And then we'll do this one. And if I just hold it for a second, it sticks. We don't have to wait forever for this stuff to dry, which is nice. So there's our lid and we can put this direct on the top or because I was going for the quarter of an inch reveal, which is what we have here. But because we enlarged the lid to make it an, an eighth bigger, we can go an eighth bigger and put a second matting behind that. So if I said that this one was three and three quarter and the outside is four, actually this one's four and an eighth, but I'm gonna come in here and just do the next titch over. So everybody wigs out about eighth of an inch but it's just halfway between the two quarter inch marks. So just under four is going to give me a teeny tiny edge around this one. And then my standard size edge around this one. Anybody ever has any questions and you know, you need me to back up and explain something, let me know. And if you wanted to put a lid on the top of this or a, a knob, you could um, thread a bead or you know, any number of things. But if you had a bead, you know, a larger one and you ran the, the thread or the whatever you're through it, you could just poke a tiny, tiny hole in there, a tiny hole in the lid and have it not on the back side, or even maybe fold out your thread and tape it down. And then you can put an inside cover to your lid and it would have a knob on the top. But that's just in case you were wondering, like I said, I'm trying to keep things simple. So what do you guys think? You willing to give it a whirl? If you wanted to decorate the inside, you notice how we did this one. This was three and a half. So we did this at three and a quarter. Now everybody's gut instinct is like, okay, I'm gonna just cut corner to corner. And that's going to give me the triangle piece that goes there, sort of, because that's going to give you the border on two sides. And that works. And if that's what you want, fabulous. If you wanted to have the border on all three sides, you're going to need to split the difference of that quarter inch and move that over again, halfway between where we started and where the quarter inch mark is. Probably wanna start in the middle and then go up and down. So you're just removing half of it. So that's half of our quarter inch and then half of this quarter inch. I was saying that I wanted a little card to slide inside the pockets and they're just a little bit shorter. Remember I was saying that the second panel was the three and three quarter inch by three and three quarter inch, right? That's the whole outside square. This piece, we went down a quarter inch. So if this was three and three quarter, this was three and a half, right? Just down a quarter of an inch. But because this has that quarter inch of tape across the bottom, it needs to be shorter. And so they're 
the right widths. This one's three and three quarter, this is three and a half, but it had to be shrunk down by half of an inch. So this is three by three and a half. And then you probably want to give them something to let them know that it's supposed to be pulled on. So let's just take a scrap of cardstock. I'm going to lay it in here and I'm watching on either side to see where I am in the middle and then score that. So that's just our one and a half inch circle punch. But I can add that to here like that and have a pull tab so they know that they're supposed to pull on it. And it could reveal a message, it could reveal photos, whatever you choose to put on there. And see, that's why I gave it the extra quarter inch. We took a quarter inch off for the bottom and a quarter inch off for the top. Number one, so you had room for your fingers to go in, but number two, so you had a little bit of room for the half circle to be a tab to pull off the top. And then if you wanted to, you could even add a rhinestone or a pearl here because it gives it some texture, makes it easier to pull on because it would have something to grip. I'm just scoring that down the middle, giving it a little bit of adhesive. And then remember, we're putting this on the long side. So don't get confused and put it over here. We want it on the long side of each of our, and these are in very vanilla because that matched my original box here. You probably want to use the white, but that gets you the measurements. Oh, the third one. We made this one, the outside is three and a half. So this is three and a quarter. So our first cut is at three and a quarter. And then I'm gonna line it at three and a quarter, but remember we're gonna back this off. One line for the top, one line for the bottom. So this is gonna be two and three quarter. Again, we wanna make sure we're on the long side. And there we go. Like I said, I made the box lid a little bit roomy. The idea is I want it to hold it together, but I don't want it to be too tight. Probably could have gone down an eighth of an inch smaller because I've added an eighth of an inch on both sides of this. Probably shouldn't have. So instead of being six, it would be five and seven eighths. But again, those eighth inch, I know sometimes wig you out. So it fits perfectly doing it with a six by six. Of course, all of these supplies, if they're not available now, will be available in January because the new pattern paper is in our new mini catalog. Good, I'm glad you found it easy. That's my intent. That's what I'm always trying to do is show you guys how easy this stuff is. So again, thank you for joining me. Um, I will be here next Monday for another Facebook Live. And I also do coffee and cards on Thursdays. So if you're around Thursday and you'd like to join me, we just kind of hang out on Zoom and just be social and talk. And I usually work on a few cards and um, some people have asked and I have made the little kits of the cards I'm making on Thursdays. So if you wanted to maybe drop by and do a porch pickup of some sample cards or you wanted me to pop some in the mail, just let me know. Um, I have supply those to all of my customers and I will see you either Thursday or next Monday.